Mohammed Al Fayed, the former owner of Harrods and father of Dodi Al Fayed, has passed away at the age of 94. His death comes nearly 26 years after the tragic car crash that claimed the life of his son Dodi and Princess Diana. Mohammed Al Fayed, who had been battling a long illness, was laid to rest in the family mausoleum, where he now rests beside his son. A Muslim funeral took place at the London Central Mosque in Regent's Park, as confirmed by his son-in-law, Ashfar Haider, in a Facebook post written in Arabic, in which he prayed for mercy and forgiveness for Mr. Al Fayed. Throughout his life, Mr. Al Fayed clung to the belief that his son Dodi and Princess Diana were not victims of a mere accident, but were, in fact, murdered in a Paris road tunnel on August 31, 1997. This theory was publicly voiced during Diana's inquest in London when he accused Prince Charles, now King, of complicity in her death, suggesting that the royal family had a hand in clearing the decks and murdering her. Mr. Al Fayed, once ranked as the 1,493rd richest person in the world by Forbes with an estimated worth of $2 billion, 1.59 billion pounds, was a prominent figure in the business world. He notably adorned his Knightsbridge store, Harrods, with an Egyptian room featuring multiple busts of himself and erected a memorial to Dodi and Diana, who were romantically involved at the time of their tragic deaths. He strongly believed that the couple was on the brink of announcing their engagement. Even two decades after the fatal accident, Mr. Al Fayed continued to make audacious claims implicating security services in the deaths of Dodi and Diana. As a result of his persistent conspiracy theories, Harrods lost its four royal warrants, which had previously granted the store the privilege of supplying goods to the royal family. In the later years of his life, allegations of sexual assault were made against Mr. Al Fayed by several women in 2017. These accusations further marred his reputation, and he withdrew from public life, retreating to his homes in Surrey and Egypt. Born in 1929 in Alexandria, Egypt, Mr. Al Fayed initially established a shipping company before relocating to the UK and climbing the social ladder, despite being denied British citizenship twice. His ownership of Harrods spanned from 1985 to 2010, and he retained ownership of the Paris Ritz, which he purchased in 1979. In an attempt to gain favor and prominence in British society, Mr. Al Fayed capitalized on his son's brief relationship with Princess Diana. Losing both his beloved son Dodi and his potential entry into the royal family was a devastating blow. In a classic move for self made tycoons, Mr. Al Fayed ventured into football and acquired full on FC in 1997, initially surprising many. With an investment exceeding £60 million, he elevated the club to the top flight but this ownership also became a financial burden. Following the September 11, 2001, terrorist attacks in New York, his income from Harrods dwindled. Throughout his life, Mr. Al Fayed made numerous allegations surrounding the deaths of his son and Princess Diana. These included claims that the security services, at the behest of Prince Philip, had orchestrated the deaths to prevent her from marrying a Muslim. He also asserted that Diana was pregnant at the time of the accident, though he lacked concrete evidence for these allegations. Mr. Al Fayed had Dodi with his first wife, Samira Khashoggi, and later divorced and remarried Haina Wathan, with whom he had Omar, Camilla, Karim, and Jasmine. Egyptian media have reported the burial of the tycoon Mohammed Abdel Monim Fayed alongside his son, who was originally interred at Brookwood Cemetery in Woking, Surrey. However, later, the son's remains were relocated to his father's estate in Oxted. Mr. Al Fayed was a man characterized by striking contradictions. He possessed the capacity for crude dishonesty, yet exuded gushing charm and generosity. He wove a tale of being a pasha's son born into immense wealth. He was known for lavishing his exceptional hospitality upon sheikhs, tycoons, politicians, and even royalty all while they enjoyed the luxuries of his helicopters, jets, three yachts, and nine homes. He had a habit of vehemently cursing his adversaries and was quick to turn against anyone he suspected of disloyalty, often to his own detriment. In the lead-up to the 1997 election, 
He exposed conservative politicians who had fallen victim to his own bribery and corruption, claiming he was cleaning up British politics. However, this move ensured that he would never be granted a UK passport. Months later, Princess Diana was his guest on a newly acquired yacht moored near his villa in Street Trapez, where the world was captivated by photographs, including one showing Fayed with his arm around the world's most glamorous woman. During that week, he introduced his 42-year-old son, Dodi, to Diana. Dodi, encouraged by his father, spared no expense to offer Diana everything money could buy and more. Diana, feeling frustrated and lonely, was charmed by Dodi's warmth and consideration. Their romance during August, watched worldwide, tragically ended when Fayette's costly security service allowed Henry Paul, the intoxicated security chief of the Ritz Hotel, to speed recklessly through the city in an attempt to evade paparazzi. Mohammed Abdelmonim Fayed was the eldest son of an unambitious school inspector whose wife passed away after giving birth to their fifth child. At just four years old, he was already eager to escape his family's poverty. As a child, he roamed Alexandria's dusty streets, selling Coca-Cola and Singer sewing machines. His salvation came at the age of 23 in 1952, when he met Adnan Khashoggi, the son of Saudi Arabia's Minister of Health, who was three years younger and still in school, but already establishing his first business venture before attending university in California. Mr. Al Fayed agreed to become Khashoggi's representative in Saudi Arabia, importing furniture. Two years later, after marrying Samira, Khashoggi's younger sister, he was adopted into the wealthy family and began to obscure his own past. The birth of his first son, Dodi, in 1955 should have furthered his ambitions, but instead led to the collapse of his marriage. Suspecting his infidelity, Samira demanded a divorce and promptly married someone else, leaving Mr. Al Fayed devastated. Abandoned by the Khashoggis, the 28 year old persevered, capitalizing on the turmoil in Egypt following General Nasser's overthrow of the monarchy and the Suez Crisis. He purchased a thriving shipping and forwarding agency from a persecuted Egyptian Jew, ultimately refusing to pay even the agreed-upon low price. His aspiration was to join the ranks of Greek shipping magnates, but his social and financial constraints thwarted those ambitions. He then ventured to Haiti, where he presented himself to Papadoc de Valier, a ruthless dictator, as Sheikh Fayed, a member of the Kuwaiti royal family. In the initial weeks, the charming impostor won over the dictator's wife and daughter and gained Duvalier's trust, enabling him to manage the nation's port authority and search for oil. His first prize was a Haitian diplomatic passport, which allowed him international travel while Egyptians required visas for most countries. However, after just six months, his venture soured, and the sheikh fled to London in 1964. Mr. Al Fayed was known for his habit of consistently spending beyond his means to maintain a facade. He presented himself as a middleman with the ability to arrange deals in the newly oil rich Middle East. His reputation received a significant boost when he crossed paths with Mahdi Al Tajir, who served as an advisor to the ruler of Dubai when the city was still a remote desert outpost on the verge of discovering oil. Mr. Al Fayed portrayed himself as a son of a pasha expelled from Egypt, boasting an impressive network of contacts within the city of London. He offered to negotiate bank loans for Dubai's inaugural harbor construction project. In 1979, Mr. Al Fayed acquired the Ritz Hotel in Paris and assumed the name Mohammed Al Fayed, with the Al implying a noble lineage. He subsequently ventured into film financing, achieving success with the Oscar-winning Chariots of Fire on his second attempt. The turning point came on March 14, 1985, when he purchased Harrods and the House of Fraser Group for a staggering £584 million. To celebrate this milestone, Mr. Al Fayed married Heine Wathen, a Finnish model who was already the mother of his two children and expecting their third. Initially, Londoners didn't pay much attention to who owned Harrods, and they were nonchalant when Mr. Al Fayed appeared alongside the Queen at the annual Windsor Horse Show. However, in March 1987, the government appointed two inspectors to investigate whether he had used his own funds to acquire the House of Fraser. His efforts to confuse the inspectors ended up backfiring. 
Desperate to gain support, Mr. Al Fayed secretly distributed thousands of pounds in 50 pounds notes to MPs and others. Despite his attempts, the inspectors concluded that he had acquired the stores through fraud and deceit. In March 1989, a special edition of The Observer revealed the inspectors' denunciations, leaving Mr. Al Fayed stunned. His paranoia grew and he bolstered security around his homes, turning them into fortresses. He declared a war against the country he claimed to admire. Unable to pressure then Prime Minister John Major into revoking the Department of Trade report and granting him citizenship, Mr. Al Fayed summoned Peter Preston, the then editor of The Guardian. He presented himself as a victim, disclosing his secret cash payments to conservative MPs and the overnight stay funded by Saudi Arabia of government minister Jonathan Aiken at his Ritz Hotel in Paris. With ministers resigning in the subsequent Cash for Questions scandal, Mr. Al Fayed reveled in the chaos, portraying himself as a power broker as the beleaguered government teetered towards collapse. In 1997, he attempted another publicity stunt by purchasing full on FC, earning adoration from the fans. He even paraded on the pitch to their cheers, envisioning himself as a pharaoh. He once used the football pitch as a stage to showcase his friend Michael Jackson, with a statue of the star placed outside the Craven Cottage ground. As the charm of these ventures faded and his Herod's income declined, auditors for the company resigned, and several senior directors, including those responsible for finances, departed. Punch Magazine, which he had acquired to launch weekly attacks on the establishment, was shut down. He admitted to reinvesting his own money from offshore accounts into the business. His financial troubles escalated when the Inland Revenue launched an investigation into the sources of his cash and tax-free earnings from bribes. As the public boycotted his store, Mr. Al Fayed withdrew from public appearances in Britain. His later years were marred by dementia, and the man who had aspired to live on par with royalty ultimately became an eternal outsider. Dear friend, if you like everything new about the royal family and don't want to miss all the novelties, subscribe to our channel and like it. By doing so, you take part in our development. We work for you.